So very quickly, I want to do a short recap of series one. I know uh, IGMB exams old this afternoon series one. So I want us to do I want to do a short recap on uh, series one so that I mean that can help you you know to revise. So I'm just going to first go through the topic. So usually your question for series one is divided into two sections, right? We have the section A and the section B. So one common thing is that in your section A, they have um, numbers of topics where that they ask you question on. So now for section A, they ask you question on formation and composition of the Bible. They ask you question on inspiration. They ask you question on canonicity and apocrypha writings and on motive authorship of the Pentateuch. So the thing is, they pick two out of these topics, right? And then they have to pick one. So section A, you answer just one question. Now, what I usually tell my students is that for you to play safe, it is better to practice the question before the exam so that you will know if you have enough materials to answer those questions if you see them in the exam now for example i just mentioned four topics that are likely to come out we have formation and composition of the bible we have inspiration canonicity and apocrypha writings and we have mosaic authorship of the pentateuch so let's assume that i'm the one preparing for the exam what i would do is that i can select two topics and, and study them well you should have knowledge of everything but you have two topics that you should practice them right practice them so that you know that okay you if you see this kind of question you know how to answer it so now let's start from inspiration and then we move on to canonicity and every other one so this particular video will just be for me explaining the section a part so let's say that you decided to Pick the two topics you are picking is canonicity and apocrypha writings, multi authorship of the Pentateuch. Now, what are the likely questions that they ask? Under inspiration theory, inspiration of the Bible, like that's the formation and composition of the Bible, they can ask you to, you know, explain the theories. They can ask you to describe the theories. You should be able to, to know that and give examples. Under canonicity and apocrypha writings, they can tell you to give criteria you know that they're using you know canonizing the bible the old testament then under music authorship of the pentateuch they can tell you to give proof you know to prove to they can tell you to prove that moses is the author of the five books or moses is not or to to say that moses is not the author so let's quickly go through it right all right so under formation and commission of the old, old testament you should be able to define inspiration of the bible yes so before your exam Ask yourself if you can define it. Get a paper, write it down. What is the definition of inspiration? That's if that is the particular topic you are picking. Like I mentioned, pick two topics. You already know the likely questions you will ask under that topic if you are very familiar with your past questions, right? So most time they ask you to define inspiration and then what are the inspirational theories? Explain them. So to start with inspirational, so I'll be using my test book to make it faster all right this is a book that i uh, published for a student preparing for high gmb and other uh, students in studying crs in the university so inspiration is that extraordinary or supernatural divine influence of the spirit of god on those who wrote the holy scriptures what this means is that the moment you know the meaning of something you'll be able to write it so what he's saying is that the holy spirit has an influence on the writers of the bible and it's prevent them from making mistakes that's basically what inspiration of the inspiration is so it's so biblical inspiration is that extraordinary or supernatural divine influence of the spirit of god on those who wrote the holy scriptures rendering their writings infallible now i expect you to also be able to quote a scholar right that would that would help the, the, the person marking the script to know that this person is really really you know really understand this topic quite well so i quoted dr goss in here and he described biblical inspiration as the inexplicable power that the divine spirit exercised over the authors of scriptures to guide them even in the employment of the words they were to use and to preserve them from error as well as from omission so you can quote that now 
quickly let's move on to inspirational theories so there are several inspirational theories you know by cool inspirational theories i'm just going to go through them so we have the natural inspirational theory i'm just going to explain to that to you so if you want to write out what i have here you can pause and write it out but one natural inspiration story is saying is that the the, the the bible itself is written by men with gift of writing right they were not inspired by the holy spirit so their expression is no different than other great philosophical thinkers so he's saying that the writers were just men who wrote books or letter the same way anybody would so natural inspiration theory is saying that there is no divine influence on the writers they just wrote you know the stories down the holy spirit did not influence them at all right so now if you are going to be quoting this theory you must be able to tell us okay what are the other things you know you know when there's a theory there will be a counter theory so all those things those are the additional things you have to eat to make your work lengthy you know you can't just submit um you can't they can't ask you a question and just submit a page you can't do that you have to make it lengthy but i will not be able to explain for that in this video because i don't want it to be too long so we have the conceptual inspiration this inspiration talks about the holy spirit inspiring their word so he's saying that the thoughts of scripture are inspired by the actual words you you know the, this is word not words pardon me so he's saying that god gave idea to the writers of scripture who did their best to convey those ideas in writing so his conceptual inspiration is saying that god gave them the idea right the theory state that god gave the authors you know the idea and did not convey it in their own words then dictation theory you know says that the writers recorded god's word they mechanically recorded the words of scripture so and we also have the orthodox inspiration theory so this theory says that you know the authors they are also you know writers right but what up helps us to get mystery from everything they wrote is because of how close they are to god that's what the orthodox inspiration theory talks about and then we have the verbal plenary inspiration you know this also talks about this is the complete theory so if you if you want to know more about the story you can scroll down on my page i actually did a class on that so I, so let me just continue with the recap so we have canonization and canonicity so yeah they can ask you to <clears throat> excuse me what is canon they can tell you to describe what canon is it's a word that comes from greek and hebrew word that literally means a measuring rod i think i did a video on that as well you can also check my video so on this particular one they can ask you to um what are the criteria for Old Testament canonicity? What are the criteria? Now, talking about criteria, the language of the book, the um, prophetic backing the book has, the silent period, you know. And let's say they flip the question and they ask you that, why were the Apocrypha books removed, right, from the uh, Old Testament book? Then you also flip your answer that Apocrypha books were removed because they were not written in Hebrew language. You can also say that they were not authentic they were not written by prophet they were not written you get so you just flip your answer for criteria and use it for why the abukifa books you know were removed and quickly the last one i'm going to touch in this video before um wrapping it up is um the, the part of the um mosaic authorship all right so let me quickly get to it the mosaic authorship they can ask you to give um uh, to prove so this i have these questions on my on the screen you can pause it and then write it out and practice it before your exam right now i don't expect you to start carrying books you know and start reading all over again this is time for you to practice question as you are practicing the question when you get stuck while answering your question you know you can quickly go and check your book okay what am i supposed to write next year do you get so don't just read now this is time to sit down get your paper and book and start writing down act like you're in the exam and start writing down the answers you will give if you have been asked these kind of questions all right so let's move to uh, mosaic authorship of the pentateuch so this pentateuch is often referred to as the law you know the five books of moses so they can tell you to give proofs of mosaic authorship you can mention that the new testament you know in Jesus frequently spoke of Moses, you know, the Old Testament books also talk about Moses. Now, if you're answering this question, it will be it will make sense if you can remember the scriptures. 
if you can quote the scripture, it will really make sense. You know, when you are saying the Pentateuch claim in many places that Moses was the writer, you can quote it no, Numbers 23 too. You know, you can quote the scripture and also um also the Moses obviously is an eyewitness of the Exodus from Egypt. So Moses was the one in Egypt. So definitely Moses is the right person to have, you know, to have written those um books. Now argument against Mosaic authorship. Now we have argument against it. Why do you have multiple names? It's not possible for an author to use multiple names for a single character, which is God. Also, Moses would never write about his death. That's not possible, realistically. Then, we also have later names mentioned, right? Why do we have later names? Those names were not in existence during the time that Moses was alive. Monarchy in Israel, Israel had not started when Moses was alive. So, why do we have the, one of those books talking about monarchy in Israel? You get so you can also look for other you know points to you know to to explain that Moses can never be the author. Do you get so we also have inconsistency, you know, some things that um, were written and they were actually not you know consistent, right? So I think that's basically what I want to cover in this video. Then they can also ask you about the documentary hypothesis. Please, it's very easy. The documentary hypothesis is not hard at all. What documentary hypothesis is all about is that it is a theory that they used to resolve this issue of Moses is not the author, Moses is the author. Do you understand? So they came up with, okay, Moses is not the author. Pentateuch is to assume that the books are a redaction. They are an edited version of several different origin sources. I did a video on documentary hypothesis. You can scroll down on my page and you see the video. I explained it quite well. So documentary hypothesis is saying that everything we have today that we call the book of Moses were books that were edited, you know, were edited version of several different origin sources, right? So I, where did they get the the um, version they edited from? That's why they now classify them into four parts. The Yahweh source, the Elohi source, the Deuteronomy source, the priestly source, right? So everything is explained there. If by eventually you are not preparing for your exam today, if you are not writing a GMB but you need this textbook, you can, you know, send me a message on 08065850914. So I'm going to end this video now and then I'm going to do another video on hard two. Meanwhile, if there's any topic you need me to explain to you before you exam this afternoon, kindly use the comment section, alright? I will do justice to that. Alright, I wish you well in your exam. Bye.